You want to? Yeah. Okay, come here. You want to feed Leka? Now tell her Blyvin. Blyvin. Now put it down slowly. No, no, no. Just put the whole bowl down, honey. Blyvin. There you go. On the day Leka got shot in May, instantly I felt the sense of urgency to fix her. Like I owe this dog every moment that I have from here on out with my son, with my mother, with my family. I owe her everything. Oh, good job, buddy. Yeah. I felt really bad because I was the one who put her inside of the building. And then at the same time, happy that I did it because I was still alive and my buddies to my left and my right were also still alive. Let's go, Lincoln. Let's go have some fun. Come on. Let's go have some fun. Come on. We go to work, uh, we train dogs with her, and then whenever we have time, we'll take her out, do a little bit of bite work with her, maybe let her find a bomb or two, just to satisfy her curiosity. She gets to take out all that stress that she's built up throughout the week. If the dog's putting the time for the country, then the country owes it to them to put the time into them. She saved my life, that's why I'm here. So I owed it to her to save her life. And that's why I wanted to adopt her. And that's why I fought so hard to adopt her, even though people were saying, no, she's too aggressive. Yeah. They're not scary. They've done scary things, but they deserve homes and they deserve good homes. First time I brought her home, Liam, my son, he was just over one years old at the time. She went right up to Liam and submitted and laid down on her back. And my one-year-old son walked over there and got on top of her chest and was grabbing her ears and putting his thumb in her nose and, and putting his hand in her mouth. And she wasn't doing anything. She was just laying there and taking every bit of it. That was awesome to see. Like, wow, that, look at your vicious dog now. Over time of just being in the backyard and, and learning that hey, I have three tennis balls around me and I didn't have to find a bomb to get it. The dog really starts to become a product of her environment. And I think that goes along with all the dogs of war. If you bring them into a home environment, they will become a product of that environment because all animals learn to adapt and survive. And that's ultimately what they're doing is coming home, adapting and surviving and becoming part of the family. It's just, it's disheartening to know that, that the people that are sending me out on targets and are making me fight call these animals excess equipment. You can ask anybody that's ever been in a firefight and somebody has used a dog to save their life. Or you have worked with any kind of platoon that utilizes a dog, they'll tell you the dudes who have boots on the ground will say, these dogs are just like our brothers to our left and our right. I have a lot of respect for them because they do stuff that I wouldn't want to do. And I know they do stuff that 99% of America wouldn't want to do. And just like us, they deserve to be retired and we owe it to them. Our hats go off to them. <laughs>